Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Miller. I'm the pastor here at First Lutheran Church in Lexington, North Carolina. And this is our video that um, goes along with those who are choosing to use table worship during this time of pandemic. And we welcome you to this place. We are a people who struggle um, to live out what it means to be a welcoming community. So welcome to this, uh, welcome to this video and it's time. Wanted to say just a few things about what the, um, the future is about to look like. Um, there will come a time when we will probably phase out this video as we get closer and closer to uh, vaccinations and in-person um, in, in -person opportunities to be together that this will, um, this video will, will eventually phase out. However, we are um, going to continue with the Facebook Live uh, worship service, and that will also be something we can post here on the website. Might come out a little bit later in the day, but, but we will, so we'll still have a video opportunity for, for folks who want to watch us either on YouTube, Facebook Live, or just see us on the website when they want to see us. Um, we will continue to do that until probably around June. And then um, the beginning of June, this video will be phased out. However, there will be worship videos that will continue. The other thing that we have also phased out is the 1030 um, children's time. We actually have that opportunity outside um, for children, it's a, it's a children's sermon time. However, um, we are thinking about Sunday school opportunities and things like that. We will continue with our outdoor worship, except we will expand it with singing and liturgy. It'll continue outside until the 1st of June. Um, and then June, we will start coming back into this space um, and we'll see what the guidelines are when we start back in June. We will probably continue to wear a mask. Um, if there is a restriction on the number of people who can be in this room in the 1st of June, we will move the, the overflow into the fellowship, which has a connect. We have a, a video connection between the two rooms if, if that is what we need during that time. We also are allowing small groups, um, women's groups, men's groups, youth groups, um, team meetings. We are allowing those to begin to meet and they can meet inside. However, at this time, we would um, prefer if you use either the big fellowship hall or the big youth room. And if you're having a meeting, if you can give us a little bit of a heads up so that we can make sure that um, groups are not on top of each other. Um, still have to uh, wear masks, um, but we would prefer you use the big rooms so that we don't reach capacity. And plus we can safely um, socially distance in the bigger rooms. So we are moving, we are moving forward and we look forward to that. Um, with all of that said, let us take this moment with our prelude as we prepare to come into our Lord's presence.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and runs away. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to lift it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is... Um, this is Good Shepherd Sunday. I don't think it's officially called that. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but it is. We're still during the, here. It's still the Easter season. We are still in the, the, the time of Easter until we get to the 50 days to get it to Pentecost. Um, so, but in the midst of that, we customarily have this Sunday. And the Sunday includes the 23rd Psalm, but it also includes something usually from the Gospel of John that talks about Jesus as a shepherd. So we call it the Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, and it's, it's, it is it is what it is, but the, the, the thing that um, we need to think about in this particular text is why is Jesus talking about the shepherding image? Um, it, it really gives a better insight into the text if you understand the fuller story. Um, and that's true often with the Gospel of John. Um, the I am statements, I am the shepherd um, of, of, of Jesus as God with us. Um, I am goes all the way back to the burning bush when God speaks to Moses. And Moses wants to know who sent me. You know who's who's the one that I have to tell Pharaoh who sent me. Um, and God tell, says, "Tell him I am." So, I am the shepherd. I am the gate. Um, this is a, a moment of God with us, the shepherd. And who is the shepherd? This is God. Now, there's a context, as always in the Gospel of John, we need to understand the larger narrative context. Um, it's a very narrative gospel. And that is, there's this blind man, he was born blind, and he gets healed on the Sabbath by Jesus. Um, and this is an impossibility. This is something that is hard for the people in the, in the religious community to get their head around because... There are things that, that miracle workers, and there were other miracle or people who claim the ability to heal. Um, the one, there's just things that only God is supposed to do. And one of those things is raise the dead, and the other one is to forgive sins, but another one is to heal the blind. Um, and this is somebody who's been blind from birth. And there's a lot of seeing and not seeing going on in, in this story. So the blind man who is blind encounters Jesus and in his blindness sees Jesus and Jesus heals him. And now he can see, but he never actually physically saw the person who healed him. He never saw Jesus. He just now can see and Jesus is gone. And now these people are saying this Jesus person healed this blind man. And, the, and there's this really struggle with, wait, how did this happen? And, and, and because of the people in religious authority, 
because they can't quite get their mind around it. And they also struggle with who sinned. And, you know, it's, it's this miracle that goes outside of their boundaries of understanding that instead of struggling with who is this Jesus, what they decide to do is just expel the blind man who's no longer blind. He's a, he's a man who now can see, but he's expelled from the community because we can't figure you out. We don't understand who you are. We don't understand what's happened. Um, and you say it's this Jesus, but it can't be this Jesus. So therefore, we are going to expel him. And he's expelled. He's kicked out. of the. Uh, of, uh, he's basically kicked out of church. And it's that context that Jesus comes back to the blind man who now can see. And now he's talking to Jesus, the one who's healed him. But he doesn't realize that's who he's talking to. Um, it's you can see all of the how the narrative plays with imagery of seeing and not seeing. And so Jesus is talking about what is what is a good shepherd. It, it's also a, a reoccurring theme. There's a lot of reoccurring themes in the Gospel of John, and that is Jesus who finds people not where Jesus thinks they should be, but where these people are. It, Jesus coming back to this blind man who's expelled is very much like Jesus who comes to Thomas later in the resurrection because Thomas missed Jesus the first time. It's always this Jesus who is coming and finding us where we are, wherever we are, in whatever circumstance we are. And, he, and Jesus finds this man who's been expelled really because the man just spoke the truth, finds him where, where he is. And, and, and there's, there's a, the question is, why would they do this, right? I was healed and I spoke the truth and I was expelled. It's in that context in which Jesus talks about, you know, there are shepherds, that, but are they, aren't they more like hired hands? This is one of those Sundays where I, as a preacher and a pastor of a congregation, who take upon the shepherding imagery, it's the model for how we as pastors do our work, we have to be very careful because sometimes if we make this about us, right, what we have to really deal with the fact is we, we are the hired hands. Being a hired hand is not a bad thing, but understand Hired hands are hired hands. This is not about Pastor Matt. This is not about religion. This is not about Lutheran. Um, these are all tools. What is this about? This room, this liturgy, this theology, this denomination, this person we call Pastor Matt. What, what are we about? We are about pointing us pointing us and pointing you to the one who is the real shepherd of the sheep. And that is Jesus. Jesus is, is the shepherd. We, we, are, we are the vehicles. We are the hired hands that help get you to that. Help you to see, right? That's the blind man who now sees, but he hasn't quite seen Jesus because he, to see Jesus is to know Jesus. And to know Jesus is to know the one who is with you. The one who is with you in the midst of your brokenness. In the midst of your pain. In the midst of your joy. The one who names and claims you in the waters of baptism. Um, we are at the other end of this pandemic. And we're starting to be able to do more. Um, we're starting, because now we are vaccinated, we are starting to, to get out more. We as a church or as a community are thinking about how do we get back to this space to worship um, and to, to be able to see that happening. But what is the other thing 
that the pandemic is teaching us, has taught us, is, is that this is not where Jesus, this is not the box that holds Jesus. As beautiful as this room is, this is not the box where we go to to find Jesus. But what have we learned? Is It is Jesus that goes and finds us where we are. Um, some of you have been very, very lonely and maybe still are. But where does Jesus choose to be? Where does Jesus choose to find us? And it's not a message of just wait, just wait. You'll, you'll be able to come and visit me. Or it's not, oh gosh, if you could just figure it all out. Or if you could just be good enough. It is Jesus who finds us where we are in the midst of whatever we're going through. And points us to himself. And in the end, how do we know Jesus is the good shepherd? Right? What, what is it that reveals love in the world? It's the one who gives himself to us on a cross, who chooses to give himself to us on a cross so that we can be reconciled with the Father, so that we can be reconciled with God. And by that, we can be reconciled to, with one another. Because it's real interesting. Also in this text, Jesus talks about a community. He talks about a community in which he will lay his life down and he will lift it up and he will ascend into heaven and reconcile, prepare a place for us to be with the Father. But he also talks about another, another flock. Now, in this text, it's pretty clear he's talking about Jewish communities, but he's also talking about the other flock, the Gentile community. In essence, Jesus is playing out what we hear in John 3.16, that God doesn't just love these people, the Lutherans, but God loves the world and reconciles the world and seeks out all of the sheep. And that's why we struggle with all is welcome. Well, if God is a God of welcome, then we have to struggle with what that means too. That's how we know. How do we know the one who loves us? It's the one who finds us where we are. And it's the one who dies for us and reconciles us through the ascension to the Father through an empty tomb. Um, I've used this story before. I've had to be in the hospital with a friend um, and a friend who values my presence. And it's made me rethink um, what it means to, to, I sit and I watch him and he lays in his hospital bed and he always has on him the prayer shawl that um, was made by the people of this community. And the room is cold to him and he uses it to keep himself warm but it's just a prayer shawl but he puts it and he, he holds it close and I look at that prayer shawl and I remember how lonely I felt during a surgery and I look at him and I realize that that prayer shawl is not just knitted string. Um, it's not just something to keep him warm. It is something that people made and prayed over. And it's something that he holds on to. And it's something that 
he holds to remember that even in the loneliness of his ICU room, he's not alone because there's a group of people who remember him. But more importantly, those people through their ministry, the people of first, through their ministry and through that prayer shawl, are pointing to the one greater than them who is the good shepherd who finds us in ICU rooms and reminds us I'm the good shepherd the one who, uh, who lays down his life for the sheep I'm the one who lifts it up again and reconciles you to God you're not alone the one who finds us sad on the side of the road or disheartened because the disciples got to see something that I missed or in the midst of our fear or in the midst of our depression or in the midst of our joy or in the midst of our longing it's the one who is with us who finds us the good shepherd the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The one, the one who, who is with us even as we breathe our final breath, right? When, when everything else melt, melts away, when the power of government melts away, when the power of money melts away, when the powers of this world mean very little as we begin to breathe our last breath, who is the one? Who is the good shepherd? Who will shepherd us even through the valley of the shadow of death and bring us beside streams of water and nourish our soul? Who is the one that shepherds us through death into new life on a cross? It's the one who finds us even in our homes in the midst of a pandemic, through prayer shawls, through videos, through pastors, through water, through word, through wine and through bread. Thanks be to God. Amen.